my name's Eliza. I'm going to show you one of the activities that we do for canal and river explorers to help children learn about canals. So the first thing you need is a box or a tray with some children's play sand in it. Let's begin to make a landscape. I'm making a river going down to the sea and some hills. Roads were very rough and bumpy. There was no electricity. Encourage children to think about what it was like 250 years ago. And if you've got some trees and a farmer, put them in to show that Britain had lots of woods and farmland. People wanted to transport things from one place to another and they used horses. And big covered carts. But the roads were awful, bumpy and muddy. Travel was slow and you could only carry a bit at a time. Boats were used on rivers for hundreds of years because you could move a much bigger load than carrying it yourself or with one horse. What's the difference between a river and a canal? We need an engineer to make a plan to show where the canal will be. The engineer lays out the route of the canal. Has the engineer drawn a straight line or a bendy line? Why might a straight line be better? Next, we need to hire some navvies to dig out the canal. When the canal has been dug, we need to add water. But what has happened to the water? Early canal engineers used clay to stop water from leaking out of the canal. They had to pack it down to get rid of any gaps and air bubbles so that it was waterproof. The navvies would drive animals from a nearby farm along the canal to stamp the clay down. I'm going to line our canal with some cellophane to represent the clay keeping the water in. If you hadn't got cellophane, you could use a piece of foil or plastic bag. Now we're ready to fill the canal with water. Ask the children for ideas about how canals are filled with water in real life. Here's a piece of coal. Everyone wanted it to burn for cooking, for the furnaces and to power the machinery in factories. Moving heavy loads of coal by boat was much easier than by pack horse. Coal was just one type of cargo. What other cargoes could be transported by boat? So our canal needs a towpath for horses to walk along. The horse was attached to the boat by a rope. The horse pulled the boat along in the water as it walked along the towpath. Then, about a hundred years ago, people started putting engines into boats. So a boat could be driven along and it could pull another boat. A great advantage because the boaters could now move twice as much cargo. The canals were used for transporting everything from coal, farm produce and manufactured goods to chocolate and the towns grew and grew. Eventually, faster forms of transport were developed and they took over from canals. What do you think these could be? So let's have a quick recap. You can build your canal in play sand, line it with plastic and test it to see if it's waterproof. You don't need any other special equipment. You can just use boxes or tins to represent buildings and any container to be the boat. Or you could make a little boat and buildings out of boxes and paper. By building canals, the whole of our country was changed. Industry grew, towns grew and people's lives were changed forever. Now you can take this activity outside and build your own canal in the garden. Check out the Build a Canal game on the website.